Good morning. Welcome to worship on this, uh, what is it? It is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. We have a few announcements this morning. First, I'm going to point out to you that I, uh, well, I've changed the hymn of the day. You might not uh, remember when we get to the point, but uh, I guess I exercised my ability to do whatever I want, right? And I decided it went better with my sermon. So we're going to sing Amazing Grace, uh, hymn number 448. You'll find it in the green hymnal uh, after uh, the sermon today. A uh, couple other announcements. Exciting news that this afternoon, or later today at our 11 o'clock service, we will be baptizing Connor Kevin Went. His parents are Travis and uh, Caitlin Went. Uh, and I have uh, just an announcement that due to lack of attendance at the 11 o'clock service, we'll be discontinuing it. Uh, after the 31st of October. We just haven't had many people coming to it. So uh, in addition, we're still looking for a few volunteers who are willing to be on the uh, Sunday School Christmas Program Committee. So uh, let me or Katie or other uh, parish ed members know if that's something that you would be able to help with. With that, uh, let us begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn from the Lutheran Book of Worship, page 301, is Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite the children up for a children's sermon as together we sing uh, hymn number 390, I Love to Tell the Story.
children of God. How are you guys this morning? Good. Thanks for coming up. I am going to have you guys do something that we're normally not supposed to do in church. Are you excited about that? All right. So I want you, when I tell you to, I want you to make a bunch of noise. Okay? So when I tell you, you can, you can clap, you can shout, you can cheer, uh, or you can sing, right? Or any of those things, right? To make some loud noises, all right? So you guys think for a second how you want to make your loud noises. I am going to, when it's time, I'm going to put my arms up in the air, and when I want you to stop, you're going to stop right away, right? I'll bring my arms down and you'll stop, okay? Everybody ready? Here we go. <laughs> Do you guys think that that's very loud? No. no. Are, are they louder than this at home? Yeah. yeah. Let's try it again. Everybody ready on how you're going to make your noises? Here we go. Let's try it. You get one shot at this. You got to use it, right? Here we go. Get ready. All right. There we go. Good job. Was that kind of fun? You get to do that, right? When you make noises in church and you're not supposed to, just sometimes maybe people get a little upset. Maybe they'll give you an evil eye, right? Or maybe they'll ask you to be quiet. Well, in the story that we're going to look at today, there was a man who was making some really loud noises, and people were asking him to stop. They were telling him to be quiet. But this man was crying out to Jesus, and Jesus always cares when we call out to him. So in the Gospel of Mark, we read about this man, and he's called Bartimaeus, and guess what? He's blind. I want you guys for a second. Can you imagine not being able to see at all? Will you close your eyes for a second? And imagine now if you had to try. Everybody, close your eyes. And imagine if you had to try to get back to your moms and dads without being able to see. Wouldn't that be hard to do? Do you think it would be really hard to be blind? Yeah. You can open up your eyes now. Uh, and it would make a lot of things hard. Back in Jesus' time, it was really hard if you couldn't see. People wrongly thought that if something happened bad to your body, like if you couldn't see, that it meant that you had done something really bad and that God was punishing you. That's what they thought it meant. Uh, it would be nearly impossible if you were blind to get a job, right? Right? So what happened is people would have to beg for money if they wanted to eat. And so this is what Bartimaeus did. He was a beggar. He'd sit alongside the road hoping that some really nice people would give him some coins so he could eat, so that he could have the things that he needed in order to live. Now, Jesus was coming by, and Bartimaeus heard about it, and, uh, well, he, uh, word had spread about Jesus. Somehow, Bartimaeus had heard that Jesus was really special, and that Jesus was somebody who would be able to help him. So when he heard that Jesus was passing by, guess what he did? He started yelling, right? Do you know what he yelled? He yelled out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, there's a couple of important things about that. First, when you call, back in those days, if you called somebody the son of David, it meant that you thought that this person was the Messiah, that everybody had been waiting for. They had been waiting and waiting and waiting for a really special person to come. Uh, and this man knew that Jesus was the one that they'd been waiting for. Not a lot of people knew this. Very few people. And secondly, he knew what it was that Jesus had come to do, which was to show mercy. Do you guys know what mercy is? 
know what mercy is? Have you heard this word before? We've heard it, right? Yep, yeah, you've heard it. But what does it mean? Well, it means uh, if we need mercy, it means that something's happened to us uh, uh, that we need some sort of help, right? Uh, maybe we're being punished and we need to be, uh, uh, or we're sick and we need to be healed, right? Something's happened. Uh, and when Jesus, when the Messiah gives mercy, what it means is that he shows compassion, right? He has sympathy. He feels bad for us. And he gives us forgiveness. Forgiveness is a really good thing, isn't it? He gives it even though we don't deserve it. So the man is crying out for Jesus for this mercy. But guess what the people around him did? They said, shh, be quiet. Don't shout. Either they thought maybe that this man, because they thought God was punishing him, uh, that Jesus wouldn't think that the man was worth helping, or maybe they were just embarrassed, right, that this man was throwing a big scene. Have you seen this happen? Somebody makes a lot of noise and embarrasses you by the way that they're acting. This happens sometimes, right? Uh, and uh, guess what Bartimaeus did? Do you think he stopped shouting out for Jesus to help him? No, he shouted even louder, right? Like when you guys were shouting and I said, oh, you can do better than that, you shouted even louder, right? You even made more noise. This is what Bartimaeus did. He wasn't going to stop because he knew that Jesus could help him. And guess what Jesus did? Do you think Jesus told him to be quiet? No. Jesus said, bring him over here. I'm going to help him. And then he asked the man, he says, well, what do you want me to do for you? And the man said, what do you think he wanted? He, to stop being blind. Yeah. So we asked Jesus to give him his sight back. Absolutely. Did you read this story before already? You know this one, don't you? This is what he asked for. He said, give me my sight back. And so Jesus could see that this man believed in him. He had faith in him. He knew that the Holy Spirit had told this man something that most people couldn't see, right? This blind man could see something that other people couldn't see, that Jesus was the Messiah, the Savior, the one who came to help everybody. And so Jesus says, yep. He healed him. He said, go, your faith has made you well. And do you know what the man did then? Well, he started following Jesus. Followed after him. Jesus was on his way to the cross, and the man followed after him. Now, this story is a remarkable example of the power that Jesus has, right? He has the power to heal. Uh, God has the power to give help and to save people. And it reminds us that when we're in need, guess what we can do? Who can we cry out to? Jesus. We can cry out to Jesus, right? We can say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Help me. Oftentimes when I hear of really bad things that happen, this is the first thing that I think of to say is, Lord, have mercy, right? Have mercy. Save us from whatever's happening. So Jesus wants to help us. He wants to listen to us. He listens to us. And do you think he'll just pass by us without doing anything, without listening at all? No. He wants to help us. And so he wants us, whenever we need something, whenever we're worried, whenever we feel bad about things that we've done, he wants us to bring them to him and to cry out for forgiveness, to take this away from us. And Jesus promises that he'll be near to us, that he'll listen to us, and that he's going to give us the mercy that we need. He's going to show us how much he cares about us. He's going to forgive us, and he's going to give us eternal life with him. We'll be with God forever. This is a great, great thing. We'll never be alone. Will you guys pray with me, and we'll thank God for hearing us 
for helping us and for saving and healing us. Repeat after me. Everybody got their hands together and their head bowed and their eyes closed. And we say together, Dear God, thank you for sending us Jesus. Thank you for healing our hearts. Help us to trust in you and keep our faith strong. Thank you for caring for our needs. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you guys so much for coming up. You can grab yourselves a treat on your way back to your moms and dads. The first lesson this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame those with child and those in labor, together, a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 126, and we will read it responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second lesson is from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. The former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Here ends the lesson. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy 
Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So how many of you have heard the story behind John Newton's beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace? Anybody heard the story behind it? There's actually a movie by the same name out. Uh, I have it if you'd like to borrow it. It's fantastic. Uh, in his early years, John Newton's mother raised him as a Christian until she died of tuberculosis at, uh, when he was six years old. Uh, he spent some time in a boarding school. Uh, uh, his stepmother took care of him for a time. And then his father, a sea captain, took him on board his ship from age 11 to age 17. Then Newton signed on with a new ship, but he was coerced into joining the British Royal Navy, where his issues with authority got him into constant trouble. A rebellious drinker, Newton tried to desert the, uh, the Royal Navy, and he was put in irons, he was flogged, and then reduced to the lowest rank on the ship. Likely he was emptying the chamber pots, right? Not long after, he moved to a slave ship, his problems with authority continued, and he was starved, imprisoned, chained, and eventually enslaved in Sierra Leone, where he stayed until his father heard of it, and then a ship found and rescued him. On that ship, Newton gained a reputation for his profanity to the point of chastisement by the other shipmates. Have you heard the expression, expression, curse like a sailor, right? This means you really have a colorful language. Well, Newton's language even offended the sailors. He was very creative, apparently. On the voyage back to England, his ship was caught in a very bad storm and nearly sank. And Newton cried out to God to have mercy on them, and eventually they made it to their destination. Though Newton began reading scripture, attending worship, and eventually he even stopped cursing, he still went on to become master of a slave ship, and he kept that up for several years. Now, on board slave ships, uh, the inhumane and horrifying combination of disease, inadequate food and water, cramped quarters, uh, and lack of some, uh, sanitation took a heavy toll on the captive slaves. Uh, up to 30% would die uh, as they were being transported. Now, after suffering a stroke, Newton retired from the sea but he continued to invest in the slave trade. Eventually, he became ordained as an Anglican priest, 
And along the way, Newton came to see that slavery was a grave sin. He was cut to the heart by the fact that he had participated in the horror of it, and he fought to abolish slavery in England. Newton's hymn, Amazing Grace, describes the repentance that God worked within Newton's heart. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. In our gospel reading today, Bartimaeus calls out Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. His words are remarkable in that something that was completely hidden, even to Jesus' disciples, was seen by this blind beggar. In referring to him as the son of David, like I mentioned in the children's sermon, Bartimaeus indicates that he knows Jesus is the long-awaited Savior. The Holy Spirit had sent to Bartimaeus a preacher of Christ and had created faith within him. Now the Jews and even Jesus' own disciples believed that their Messiah would come as a political ruler who would take his seat as their earthly king, which is perhaps why Jesus up until now had kept his identity hidden so that people wouldn't know that he was the Messiah and they wouldn't force him to become their king. Illustrating their their lack of understanding, James and John, in the passage just prior to this one, had asked Jesus to give them places of honor as Jesus' left and right-hand men, his generals, they hoped, in the bloody battle that they believed would be waged against the Roman Gentiles who were oppressing them. But Bartimaeus knows what Jesus has truly been sent to do. Not to conquer earthly enemies, but to conquer our sin by having mercy on us. Bartimaeus could have claimed... Uh, as we often hear, uh, that he deserved, that the Lord owed it to him to restore his vision, to heal his eyes, that this was the just thing for God to do, the very least that Jesus could do for him, which, of course, when we approach God, uh, this reveals our hardness of heart. Instead, Bartimaeus who's been given a new clean heart, comes to Jesus begging for mercy. Don't give me what I deserve for my sin, Jesus, but give me what you've come to give because of your goodness, your merciful compassion, your forgiveness, your loving kindness. Give that to me. In the revelation of Jesus as his merciful Savior by faith, Bartimaeus has already received from God the greatest gift, salvation from judgment on the last day and life with God forever. But he asked Jesus now for another smaller gift. Rabboni, let me see again. Bartimaeus desires to see his Savior face to face. And Jesus uh, grants his request Go, your faith has made you well. And then we're told that Bartimaeus followed Jesus on his way to the cross. Now, I'm not lifting Bartimaeus up as someone for you to emulate, nor Newton, because upon uh, arriving in Jerusalem, we know that Bartimaeus took his place alongside all the other sinners including you and me, who put Jesus to death because of our sins. Instead, I lift Bartimaeus up as an example of what the Lord is doing in each of our lives, showing us our need for mercy. Like Newton and Bartimaeus, we may claim 
that we were once we were blind, but now we see. Yet the Lord has called each of us to an entire life of repentance, a daily dying to sin and then being raised up to new life by the gospel. And of course, this happens to us first in baptism, uh, which little Connor went, will receive this gift today. In baptism, the Lord names us as sinners and reveals himself to us as our Savior. He gives his name to us so that we can call on him for mercy in our time of need. The Lord, out of his great love for us, will continue to reveal to us our sins throughout our entire lives, giving us eyes to see them and repenting us of them. The Lord will not allow us to become like the rich young ruler that we heard about a couple weeks ago who claims that he's kept all the commandments since his youth. Instead, the Lord's making us like the blind beggar Bartimaeus who cries out for his, his need for mercy, like Newton who confessed that he was a wretch who needed to be saved. The Lord is peeling away from us our self-righteousness as he clothes us in the baptismal robe of his own brilliant righteousness. As Ephesians 2 tells us so beautifully, God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raises us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Our Lord has come here today having heard our cries for mercy. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. By Christ's command and in his stead, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Go, your faith has made you well. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me and you. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for all people in Christ Jesus. Hear our cries and be attentive to the voice of our pleas, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send laborers into your harvest, Lord, and preachers to gather your elect from the farthest parts of the earth. Sustain all pastors and missionaries faithful in their callings. Bless our schools and teachers, our congregations, and their servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have appointed us as priests in your kingdom, not to offer dead works out of our own weakness, but to offer prayers and living sacrifices made holy, innocent, and unstained by the once-for-all service of Christ, our High Priest. Make every Christian household constant in prayer and good works, since our Savior always lives to make intercession for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strike down the haughty, O Lord of hosts, and every hostile voice that would rebuke the voice of faith with its cries and prayers. Uphold the protection of our nation and its leaders in honest service for the good of the people, especially that the gospel may be preached and heard without hindrance. We pray for our military at home and abroad, especially Kylie Graff, Ethan Langseth, Jesse Kettner, Emily Went, Joseph Went, and Tabor Gluth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, save your people and be a father to the Holy Christian Church. Give courage to the hearts of all who cry to you for mercy. Especially we lift up Jared Nelson, Katina Bittler, Leona Schottel, Alice Trebish, and William Matsky. Give them steadfast faith and be pleased to grant them recovery that they may follow you now and into everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a quick note that there is coffee talk today, uh, so please stay for that. Receive now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn from the Lutheran Book of Worship, page 305, is I Lay My Sins on Jesus. Mm -hmm. 